For more now, we can cross to Ukraine and speak to our correspondent, Gulliver Krag. Gulliver, you've been reporting recently in those suburbs of Kyiv where those horrific images have emerged. Just tell us a little bit about what it is you've seen. Well, in Bucha, Irpin and Hostomel, I saw absolutely terrible destruction of the cities, of homes and uh, all of the buildings, basically, are really apocalyptic scenes in some parts of those towns, in large parts of those towns, uh, really. I didn't myself see the bodies of any civilians or any of these mass graves. And I did speak to civilians in Bucha who said that they hadn't seen any such behavior from the Russian occupiers. I don't think at all for a second that that means uh, that it didn't happen. It's very clear, and the evidence is very clear and shocking of these killings that took place in Butcher. The only thing we can say is that it doesn't seem to have been systematic across the whole town. It will be very important to investigate this clearly and try to find out. Some Russian units clearly had instructions to do this uh, or behaved in that way, and others did not. It's a mystery, in a way, why some areas were spared and some areas saw people being, it, it seems, you know, shot in the back. Um, and, and in some of the photos show people were with their hands tied behind their back, uh, having been killed. But it's not across the whole of the town of Bucha. But having said that, what it does seem increasingly clear is that across all of Ukraine, areas that were occupied by the Russians and are now back under Ukrainian control, in all of these places, people are telling similar stories of civilians basically being summarily killed by the Russian occupiers. And Gulliver, you've now left those suburbs around Kyiv. I understand you're now in the centre of Ukraine and you've been meeting some farmers there affected by the war in a number of different ways. Give us a sense of what it is that they've been telling you. Yeah, well, you know, farmers in Ukraine are affected by the war, whether or not they've got land that has seen combat action. Those part of whose land has been occupied by Russian forces are in an absolutely terrible situation, obviously. But what farmers I've been speaking to today in Vinitsa region, which has not seen any Russian forces uh, on the ground, have been telling me is that they are really facing a terrible crisis as well. For example, the farmers I was speaking to today said that they had ordered seeds from Kharkiv. The warehouse in Kharkiv was blown up. They're not getting delivered their seeds. There are all kinds of other logistical problems. Also, they can't get credits from banks that they need in order to buy the stuff that they need. So these farmers at the moment are carrying out their sowing season as best they can, but they said with limited resources. And then the main worry, of course, is once they harvest their crops, how are they going to sell them? How are they going to export? them. Most Ukrainian agricultural produce is exported by sea. And at the moment, all of Ukraine's ports are blocked and can't be used. So this is a really huge crisis that looms and which has global implications because Ukraine is a really major exporter of food products. 42% of the world's, world's sunflower oil comes from Ukraine, 9% uh, of the world's wheat and 16% of the world's corn, just to give you a few examples. And so if Ukraine is not able to export those products, it's going to have a huge, huge impact on global food supplies. Gulliver Craig in Ukraine. Thank you very much.